Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this little sleepy girl here is Julie Oliver and she's a dog but a dog with a very keen interest in science. She may appear to be sleeping but she's still listening. So in this video we are going to be looking at the concerns that some people have about potential long-term side effects of COVID vaccines. So let's go back to the science and have a look at the evidence. Now the first thing to know is that when we normally talk about long-term side effects of a medication we usually mean side effects that occur after taking the medication for a long time. We don't mean side effects that occur a long time after the medication was taken. In the case of vaccines, we have been using them for over 200 years and during that time there has never been a side effect that initially occurred more than six weeks after vaccination. Side effects can occur, of course, but they will be picked up in the first six weeks. And given that billions of doses of COVID vaccines have now been administered worldwide, the chances of any new side effects popping up are exceedingly unlikely. To understand why, Let's have a quick recap on how vaccines work. So when you are vaccinated, your body will mount an immune response. And that's why short term, you might feel a bit unwell with fever, headaches, fatigue, and muscle aches. It's not the vaccine that is making you feel this way, but your body's immune response. This initial response won't last long, however, because your body will quickly break up the vaccine and clear it from your system. So that's the short term effect, but as part of the immune response, your body will also make antibodies, memory B cells and T cells. So your body is ready next time it sees something similar to the vaccine like the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And I will talk, talk more about the function of these various elements in a later video. So hit the subscribe button if you'd like to know more. Now, the important thing to remember is that the actual vaccine is completely cleared from the body within two weeks. So if there is no vaccine there, there is nothing to cause long-term effects. And of course, the process your body goes through when it is exposed to a vaccine is a bit like when it is exposed to a virus, except better. So let's have a look at what happens when you are infected with SARS-CoV-2. So this looks familiar. Just like with the vaccine, your body will mount an immune response and you will be left with long-term protection in case you are infected again. But there's a big difference. The infection will also cause disease. And that is because the virus will continue to replicate and invade a lot more cells before the immune system can get it under control. This means that you'll feel sicker for a lot longer and it will also lead to a lot of cells being damaged and destroyed. What can also happen in some people is the immune response continues after the virus is cleared and this hyperactive immune response causes inflammation and oxidative stress. So this means for a lot of people, as well as immunity, they can also get other long-term effects and those effects include long COVID and organ damage. So essentially the long-term effects that you get from the vaccine, you will also get after infection with SARS-CoV-2. But with SARS-CoV-2, you may also get a few extra unwanted side effects. Of course, there are some rare side effects that can occur following vaccination. And it is important to be aware of these. In particular, you need to be on the lookout for the symptoms of these side effects so that you can get immediate medical treatment. However, these side effects will also occur with COVID and to a much greater extent. So let's have a look at a few papers that have investigated this. So the first paper was published in the British Medical Journal and it looked at complications up to 28 days after either being vaccinated or infected for people in the UK. So let's scroll down and have a look. And I'll just expand this section to make it easier to see. So it was quite a large trial. It involved 19.6 million people who had taken the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, 9.5 million who had taken the Pfizer vaccine, and 1.8 million who had been infected with SARS-CoV-2. What did they find? Let's have a look. Basically, for every complication, the risk was higher with infection than with the vaccine. So we can see that the AstraZeneca vaccine slightly increases your risk of thrombocytopenia, but that risk is still considerably lower than the risk following an infection. And for blood clots in the veins, 
which they call venous thromboembolism, the risk following infection is even higher. Now, looking at the Pfizer vaccine, we can see there is a very small increased risk of stroke, but again, this is considerably lower than the risk following infection. So what about myocarditis? You would have heard that this is a rare side effect that can occur following vaccination with mRNA vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna. But how does this risk compare to the risk following infection of SARS-CoV-2? Let's have a look. So this study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and they compared people in Israel who had received the Pfizer mRNA vaccine with people who had been infected with SARS-CoV-2. So what they found was there was an absolute risk of myocarditis in people who had received the vaccine of 2.7 per 100,000. But in people who were infected with SARS-CoV-2, it was 11 per 100,000. They also found that SARS-CoV-2 infection was also associated with a number of other serious adverse events, including pericarditis, arrhythmia, deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, myocardial infarction, intracranial hemorrhage, and thrombocytopenia. So we can see that the rare side effects that do occur following vaccination are much more likely to occur if you actually get infected with SARS-CoV-2. Importantly though, you should always be on the lookout for these complications so you can get immediate medical treatment, which will make a huge difference to your outcome. So in the case of blood clot disorders, the symptoms to look out for are severe or persistent headaches, blurred vision, confusion or seizures, shortness of breath, chest pain, leg swelling or persistent abdominal pain, and unusual skin bruising or pinpoint round spots. In the case of myocarditis, you should look for chest pain, shortness of breath and palpitations. And remember, these conditions don't just occur after vaccination or in COVID sufferers. They can have many causes. So you should never ignore these symptoms, no matter when they occur. So just to summarise, new long-term effects are very unlikely with COVID vaccines because the vaccines are cleared from the body within two weeks. Short-term effects can occur, but their incidence is lower than with COVID-19. So if you know anyone with these concerns, please share this video with them. If you'd like to read the papers that I discussed yourselves, you'll find the links to them in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. So thank you for listening. And if you'd like to see more videos in the future, please hit the subscribe button.